Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I have a special guest, first time not filming by myself, so this is gonna be fun, so I'm not just talking to my phone. <laughs> so this is my friend, Meredith. I have known oh. Meredith for, I don't even know how long, do you remember how long we've known each other? Probably like two or three years Yeah, ago. so two, my friend of two or three years, she <laughs> is as makeup obsessed as I am, as you will soon find out. So I thought it would be fun today to do our makeup on camera, just like chat about what we love about beauty, all that kind of stuff. I actually have some questions prepared here because I'm always prepared for videos. So if you are interested in hearing more about my lovely friend Meredith, if you are interested in just hearing us talk about makeup stuff, then please keep on watching. All right, so we actually have wine here just because since this is her first time filming, she's like, this will make me more natural on camera. And I never pass up an opportunity to drink some wine, so. <laughs> and I'm like, is this natural? <laughs> All right, so it'll make the answers more interesting. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna start with our bases. So what do you like to use with your base? So recently, I've had a hard time finding like a primer that works for me. So a huge person I've been following recently for makeup advice is Robert Welsh. I'm sort he's oh, he's become yeah. really popular recently, and yeah. same for his brother mm -hmm. for skincare. And he's recommended using like a hydrating, either like a mist or a serum. So I got this for Christmas and I thought I'd try it today. Just hold it up a little bit higher. It's not technically, <laughs> <laughs> it's not technically a primer. It's the Saturday Skin Daily Dew Hydrating Essence Mist. So mm. it's not a primer, but he said for, for oily skin sometimes, and I have super oily skin. So sometimes we need the hydration because when we put on all the powders and the foundations and all the different products, our skin's like, what? So I'm gonna try this. It might look horrible, but we'll see. Yeah, well, I actually do something similar for my first step. So as you all know, Glossier Future Dew is my bae. So I have dry skin, so Meredith and I are like kind of opposites here. And We're like opposites in all things makeup. Yeah, pretty much. Which is much. actually really funny. <laughs> so this video could be titled something like, doing my makeup with my friend who likes all the opposite stuff that I like. But anyways, this provides a lot of moisture to my skin, glow to my skin, all that lovely stuff that I love. So we're gonna apply this to our face. Yeah, so anyways, if you all are wondering what Meredith does for a living, I'm I'm a boring financial analyst. <laughs> uh, Meredith has a much more interesting job. So Meredith yeah. is actually graduating from grad school next week, whoop whoop, but she is a nurse. So I am a nurse. So you're a psych nurse, right? I am a psychiatric nurse. Um, I'm graduating next week to be a psychiatric nurse practitioner. Um, so I'll be diagnosing, doing therapy, prescribing medications, and managing people with mental illness and severe mental illness. But right now I work in a bedside unit with dementia patients, so. So basically Meredith is awesome. <laughs> and her, her work is very important and we all appreciate her all that. So what's your next step? Um, foundation. Mm, well I have another primer. Oh. Nice. So what is your foundation? Um, so this is kind of my tried and true. I've been trying a lot of different things recently but this one has always worked for me. It's the L'Oreal Paris Infallible Pro Glow. Um, I've tried a bunch of like, you know, of the higher name ones at like Sephora and stuff, but they're always, they always look too cakey to me. But this one I just really, really like because it's a lot of coverage, but it still looks like skin. And it's like the perfect tone for me, whereas the drug or the ones at Sephora are always like, I can't find my shade. Mm. I don't know why I got lucky with this one. So I've been using this for a long, long time. That's cool. And it yeah. saves you some money too. Yeah. Well, I have another bougie product to surprise. So this is the <laughs> Becca Cosmetics. Uh, this is the Shimmering Skin Perfector. So Becca is closing down. So once this is done, I am done with this forever. I heard about that. But I actually have been using a different primer on, on other days, which is the uh, Super Goop Glow Screen, which is sunscreen and it provides glow to the face like this does. And it works really well, so I think that'll be my replacement. But I'm using this baby until she's done. Let's answer another question while we're beating our faces. Okay. So how, uh, not how long we've been friends, but how did we meet originally? I think we I met think through Kathy, right? It was right? through mutual friends. Yeah. Um, and then we both just realized we had very similar interests. I think it was really Orange Theory initially mm -hmm. that is what brought us together. And then we just kind of found out that makeup was a thing as well yeah so yeah so what i remember is like i met you a few times through that mutual friend and so we hung out with her and then we realized we went to the same orange theory classes and then we were like wait a minute we actually like really get along without that friend so then we start hanging out just us and then yeah we've been friends ever since yeah 
All right, where's my foundation? This isn't really foundation, but for spring and summertime, sometimes I like to go for lighter coverage. So I'm gonna use this CoverGirl BB cream. This is nothing new. I've used this for years. So I'm just gonna apply that to my face. Head. Concealer. So Pat McGrath concealer for spot concealing. You all know the drill. This is in the shade L2. So how about I guess I ask you another question. So how long have you been into makeup for? Um. Since 2014, and I remember specifically, like, you know, I always wore makeup, like, but I never got really in into it, like, being yeah. interested and wanting to try new things and liking it more than just for wanting to look better. Like, mm -hmm. it became, like, an actual hobby in 2014 because I remember that Halloween, I wanted to be Rosie the Riveter. Oh. And, you know, she has the classic red lip and, yep. like, a little baby wing liner. Mm hmm and I was getting so frustrated because I could not do that wing liner for the life of me. I still have that struggle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, me too, especially since I have a scar right here. It's like, I don't even try oh, anymore because it's yeah. not even. But, um, so I, I was getting really frustrated and that kind of just inspired me to like keep practicing it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, watch YouTube videos and then slowly from there it just kind of became an obsession. <laughs> <laughs> An obsession. Me beating my face whenever I have a chance. So. Yep, yep, yep. I don't remember the exact year. I'm I'm surprised you remember the exact year. That is impressive. I like you because it was a holiday. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. So I guess it that, that like made it stick out in your mind. Yeah, it, yeah. Because if it weren't for that moment of being frustrated, I probably wouldn't remember it. You mm -hmm. know. So yeah, I I remember getting really into makeup in high school. So my mom has always really been into makeup, and she used to do my makeup for like dance recitals and stuff, and I'd get really into it. But I was allowed to wear a little bit of makeup when I was in eighth grade. Um, I was allowed to wear like blush and powder and mascara, and that was about it. And then in high school, I was really allowed to go kind of crazy. So at first, I would just match my eyeshadow to exactly to my outfit. Like if I was wearing a blue top, I'd be wearing like the same exact color blue Monochromatic eyeshadow. Monochromatic queen. Oh yeah. And then I realized, oh wait, and I'd only wear one shade of eyeshadow. <laughs> and then I realized, oh wait, you could actually do more than just that. So then I started looking up like YouTube tutorials when I was in like ninth grade, and then I got really into it. And then I eventually my knowledge increased above my mom's and then I then I started teaching her things and then I got her into YouTube and it's been like a whole thing so nice. yeah that's that's how I got into makeup anyways I forgot to tell you all I'm bronzing now with my Fenty cream bronzer this is in the shade butter biscuit it's like my favorite cream bronzer I wanted to try that. and are you using concealer I'm now? using concealer I'm using the cult classic tart shape tape oh. um what just, shade are you what shade am I no one two s fair okay yeah, that's, a, that's something you have to get used to, too. You're like, oh, yeah, what shade am I? I'm just like Aaron is. Yeah. Normally, I'm just like, oh, I'm probably the lightest shade. Sometimes I say that on camera. I'm <laughs> like, I'm just pale. <laughs> so for blush, I have one of my favorites, Ritua de Fee. This is the Inner Glow Cream Pigment, and I have this in the shade Lust. It looks really dark in the pan. It's not dark and intimidating on your cheeks. I love cream blush, as you know. <laughs> I'm gonna do a cream blush today because I haven't done one in a while. Oh, good. So how would you describe your makeup aesthetic, Meredith? Neutral glam, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like it's changed over the years, but something that's always stayed steady is like neutral tones, golds, browns, warm tones. Mm -hmm. And I think that just really complements my skin tone too. Mm -hmm. So I've always just kind of stuck with that and it's my favorite to do for fun. Um, I branch out every now and then, but that's my comfort zone, so. <laughs> yeah, I would describe yours pretty similarly. I would say you love your warm tone neutrals, oh you love God. a blown out crease. Oh, I love you, a blown out crease. You love a blown out lower lash line. <laughs> Literally, just, because my philosophy is if I'm gonna do my makeup, like I'm gonna, if it's not for work, that like, or school, because mm -hmm. you know, I'm not gonna. Do You're not gonna anything. be a nurse with a smoky eye or anything? No. I wore makeup to work once and I regretted it immediately as I got there. Yeah. So for blush, I'm gonna use Milk Makeup, um, their cream blush. I don't really know what it's called. It's okay. It's the twisty up one in the shade <laughs> Work with work. an E. Work. Work. And I'm using Ritua de Fee uh, highlighter. This is the Metamorphic highlighter in the shade Siren. It's just a beautiful like goldy shade. So it has some sparkle and shimmer particles in it. So I guess it's my turn to describe my makeup aesthetic yeah. and you tell me if you agree with me or not. But I feel like mine changes every day. <laughs> so I would say mine is like 
I like to be creative. I like to use a lot of color, but I also like neutrals too. It just depends on what I'm feeling that day. Yeah. So if I had to go for like some phrases or words that I think meets my makeup aesthetic, I would say like glowy, dewy. Yeah, for like eyeshadow, I would say like sometimes it's like bright, fun colors. And then sometimes it's like, just like neutrals. Mm -hmm. I also really love like very intense, like metallic eyeshadows. Um, so that, I would say that's my makeup aesthetic. I'm not sure if that's an aesthetic or well, if that's I was just, gonna, I, I was know. gonna say dewy, colorful for you. Mm -hmm. Um, cause even if you're doing like quote unquote business professional makeup, you still find a way to use color Yeah. and your dewy base is just iconic. Thank you. <laughs> which is like, I wish I could get, get away with that, but. It's about skin type in my opinion. And I, I can't. I am dry, so dry that I feel like I need that moisture in the dewy base to like counteract dry yeah. patches and no. stuff. I would drown. <laughs> Speaking um, of, I'm gonna set with powder now. Yeah, there you go. And I'm gonna go back into my spot concealer on some little areas in my forehead. I might do the same. I don't know if it's the lights or like what's making me feel warm but I feel very warm right now. Maybe it's, maybe it's the wine. I don't know. I think it's a mix of the lights, wine, and me being like nervous. I'm not nervous. Well, I'm not nervous. It's more just like, I'm gonna look back at this and be like, wow. You'll be fine, trust <laughs> me. I'll, I'll edit you and you'll look like a supermodel. <laughs> I'm kidding. I just edit the video. I don't edit like myself. You don't use filters oh, and gosh, no. frames? And, no, no. Um, what are all the ones called? I don't even know what they're called because I don't use I them. do very basic editing. Like, very basic editing. I'm not willing to like spend like hours and hours editing a video. Yeah, because there's some people who will like they'll put filters over the video, nope. but they spend hours editing it nope. because James Welsh has a really interesting series on his channel called Instagram versus reality. Mm. But he looks at YouTube and stuff too yeah. about how you can tell if someone's using a filter, if their videos are edited, especially on videos that are sponsored or are promoting a product because that's mm. essentially like falsifying information Deception. so it, it's really interesting and it's just given me a lot of insight into like like i already knew everything you see on instagram isn't real because duh but it gives yeah. you even more insight you're like oh like there's that much work put into it mm -hmm. so it's interesting yeah well i don't i don't spoiler alert i don't put in that much work into my videos i just color corrected with my chanel color corrector this is the rose corrector it's amazing i have dark under eye circles if you've watched me before, you know all this thing. And under eye concealer, Maybelline, instant age rewind. I don't know how much age it's gonna rewind because I'm like in my early 20s, but that is a great concealer. Maybe it'll make me look like I'm 16 again or something, I don't know. <laughs> you already kind of look like you're 16. I do? I've been told I look older than you're 20, I am. You're still 23, right? I'm 22. Almost Okay, 23. I'm four years older than her. And she's over here like, I look so old. I don't look old. I just feel like, because everybody's always told me I look older than I am. Maybe it's because I've always been tall for my age. Yeah, I don't know how that feels. Powder. I actually do powder. So this is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. Oh, we have a visitor. Oh, oh, hello. Hello. I was like, why are you so obsessed with me? She is obsessed with you. All right. Do you finish your face completely before doing eyes? Yep. Okay, so I'll do that too then. I well, you don't have to do that. I'm just. I'm. I. I jump around. I'm. Weird. I know you're not supposed to do that, but I do. That. Like I do. I do what I just did, and then I go to my eyes, and then I go back and do bronzer and highlight. Mm. So I don't know why I do. Okay. So now I'm gonna prime my eyes because I go in a different order than Victoria. That's okay. I'm gonna use the Milani eyeshadow primer, which is my holy grail too. I love it. I'm obsessed with it. This is a new product of mine that I just asked Meredith to reach for me. This is the Beauty Blender like powder puff thing. This thing is really good. I use it to really? bake under oh, my eyes. Oh, it's from Beauty Blender? Yeah, it's from Beauty Blender. And you like just put it on your fingers and then you just go boop boop and then you just tap it under your eyes. And I feel like the fallout for the powder is a lot less than it used to be. Oh, nice. So I really like this thing. Did you get anything during the Sephora sale? There was a sale. Yeah. See, that's how aware this, I am. The spring Sephora sale. No. Um, <laughs> that answers your question. Nope. No. I got a few things. I got this. I got the Melt Cosmetics Mary Jane palette. Mary, Mary Jane? Like, yeah. is it green? Uh, no, it's actually like grays. Cool tone neutrals. Oh. I it's, in it. it's inspired by the colors of like marijuana smoke. Which oh, I, I don't. Smoke. I don't smoke. I don't smoke weed. Well, that's why I thought it was green. It would be green. Yeah. Well, they, it seems like every year they have like a weed themed palette, but I've always wanted to try Melt. 
but I don't know, just like none of their other palettes like really spoke to me. And that one I was like, ooh, it's pretty. So I bought it. And I actually like it, I really like it. I need to film with it though, I just haven't done it. I don't even know what this product is called because the is that the Is that from Anastasia? It's Anastasia. Is that the dip brow gel? Something. It <laughs> might it might be the dip brow gel. <laughs> it's just destroyed. Oh. That's funny. She takes better care of her makeup than I do. I mean, uh, I'm rough with it as well. I'm rough with it as well. All right. Let me ask you another question that I have prepared. Okay. So is there a makeup product that I own that you're like, ooh, I want that in my life? Um, hmm. I mean, you just have a lot more makeup than me in general. Yeah, I have a problem. So that, I think I'm jealous of your brush collection. Because mm. I think in the hype of the moment, we sometimes forget how important brushes are. And I don't have that many brushes. Like, I have enough to, like, do a variety of things, but, like, I wish I had, like, options. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm really jealous of that. I mean, I feel like eyeshadow is, like, a cop-out answer because you have so many different eyeshadows. So, Ooh, yeah. Um, definitely the brush collection. Like, a diverse brush collection would be... Would hmm. change my game. I was expecting you to say, like, one of my palettes, so I'm kind of surprised. But that's a good answer. You have so many palettes, I can't differentiate them. <laughs> And I don't know the names of them. Yeah, so. that, that's that's true. You could be like that one with all the colors. I'd be like, which one? Yeah, exactly. So I'm like brushes. Brushes. Yeah, that's, that's, that is a good answer though. I would say and, and I, all your cream br blushes. Oh this, yeah. That, the one that I use, it's the only cream blush <laughs> that I own. So yeah. it would be nice to have different shades. Oh, okay. I thought of a specific product, and I'm still gonna have to explain it. But the Glossier cream blush. That's like that. Oh, the cloud paint. Yeah, the cloud paint, and that's in Dawn. And yeah. the orangey pinky one, or orangey peachy one. I mean, see yeah. that? That's what I look for. That might in a be blush. Dusk. That is it, is it like the natural looking one? Yeah, that's but dusk, it's more then. like peachy than it is pink. Yeah, that's what yeah. I like. So I, I remember last time we did our makeup together, I used that and I really, really liked it. Yeah, and then I'm gonna ask myself the same question with you. So, <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I don't really have anything that interesting. There is me. something I have. I do have an answer. Okay. So for a makeup product that I'm jealous of that Meredith has, uh, I would say your Amarizi highlighter. Because oh, girl, you know, brought it today. Because you can't get that anymore. And even though I'm a pale person, I remember you did use it on me once and it did look really nice. So I think you can apply it light enough that it would look okay on me. And, it, and even if it was too dark, I could like mix it with another highlighter and it'd be fine. So I would say the Amorizi highlighter, just because you can't get it anymore and everybody loves it so That's much. That's true. I forgot and that that was limited edition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is my, I, I don't wear it to like clinical and work because it is very special but um when i'm like going out and i'm like nights like tonight where i'm just like i'm gonna go all out like it's my go-to i love it and i'm kind of um olivey yellow dark not dark but you know i'm more yeah more than her oh well, that's everybody <laughs> <laughs> so i think it complements my skin really well so i'm obsessed with it so that's a good answer yeah Thank you. I actually thought about that. When I, when I drafted that question, I was like, what is something that Meredith has? I was like, oh. You're like, she has nothing. No. I have everything. You, oh, you have a lot less than I have, so. And then also, we're, we have very different aesthetics, and you also, um, your, your skin tone is a lot different than mine, too, so. Okay, I have a question. There is one recently that I actually did declutter, if you all have watched that video. <laughs> so, um, I had this palette from what's the brand alter ego and it and it was a dupe palette of the natasha denona metropolis and i'll like pop a picture somewhere i'll probably be blocking one of her faces but whatever you can block uh, mine no one needs to see it <laughs> what? they want to see it that's why they're watching this video yeah. anyways so it was the natasha denona metropolis i really wanted the actual metropolis palette but at the time i'd never tried natasha denona's formula so i was like am i gonna like this and so I bought the dupe version from Alter Ego, and I hated it. I hated it so much. I felt like the cream to powders were just absolute trash. You couldn't get any pigment to pick up on your brush. Like the shimmers were nice, the actual powder mattes were nice, but most of the mattes were cream to powder, so I just felt like the palette as a whole was pretty unusable because all the cream to powder sucked. So that was definitely a regret, and I'm never buying from Alter Ego again just because I had a bad experience, and I'm not a fan. I primed my eyes with the Milani eyeshadow primer. Oh, I'm now using Anastasia Beverly Hills, say that three times fast, Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz in dark brown. Cool. Because I like going in just, because I have really bushy eyebrows, so I like getting most of the color with this and then just filling in the sparse. 
I'm gonna be using the Natasha Denona Bronze Palette. I don't think I've used this on my channel yet. So I actually bought this during the Beautylish gift card event. So I got a gift card with this and another item that I bought. And I think actually two other items that I bought. And then I used the gift card to buy the Brazilian Bum Bum Cream and a perfume that came with the Brazilian Bum Bum Cream. What do you cream. think of that? The Bum Bum? It smells so good. You can use it if you want to. I have a Is brand it, new Can jar you it. use it? Oh, okay. You don't have to use it on your butt. I use it on my arms and legs. Okay. <laughs> that was like. <laughs> but it's like, it's supposed to be like firming, but I don't really think it's firming. It, I mean, how can a product change? Your butt, your tish, your little fat and tissue. Yeah, you're a nurse. Right you should know this. It, you're like, it can't. Probably not. Yeah, but it's good. I'm I not mean, a scientist. It but. smells divine, and then the perfume that came with it that I like, I got, a, I got a gift set, and the perfume that came with <gasps> oh, it nice. smells exactly like it. Oh. And it, and like the perfume smells like pistachio and vanilla and caramel. Like That's you nice. smell like, like a bakery. It's so anyways, I went to that shade Beach, which is down in this bottom right-hand corner. I'm just applying that to my crease with the Nabla N306, my one of my favorite crease brushes. What is your favorite thing about the way I do my makeup? Oh, your dewy skin. 100%. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm jealous that I can't necessarily do it. Like, I, can, I do it to a degree, you know, yeah. obviously, and I fake it with highlighter, but I mean, we all do. Us oily ladies, we can't do that all the time, so. Yeah. Especially during the summer, holy moly. Yeah, that would be a mess. Like, I'm already about to repowder my face. That's how hot really? and oily I am, yeah. Oh my god. Like, I'm already feeling, feeling it. So, yeah. um, definitely that, for sure. And now I'm gonna ask myself the same question. So, what's my favorite thing about the way you do your makeup? I would say I love the way that you do your crease with your eyeshadow. Like, yes. that time that you came over here, probably like a year ago, and yeah, it was that time I got the Fenty Cream blushes and that Patrick Ta brow wax and we couldn't oh, open the yeah. darn thing. Oh, yeah. That was like a year ago, like right when COVID started pretty oh much. Oh my God, yeah, you're right. And I remember you did my makeup and you did like warm tone neutrals and you did my crease. And, and I was gonna do Luke, everything you hate. <laughs> and I was like, it's gonna look good. Well, the crease looked amazing. I remember Luke looked at my eyeshadow and he was like, I like the way Meredith did your eyeshadow better than what you did. And I, like what you do. And I was like, oh shoot. So then I started like seeing how you were doing your like eyeshadow and I kind of like was inspired by it. And so I actually do my crease a bit more similar to what oh, you're nice. doing now. So. I just think, and I, I, I think I mentioned this when I did your makeup and was blowing out your crease. You have so much more space to play with. Oh yeah, I have a lot so of I'm like, state. why don't you use it? If I had all that space, like girl, like it'd be going above my eyebrow to the. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. But I, um, yeah, I always do say like I have a lot of good like live real estate. And so. I don't, so I have to make do with what I have. But um, so sometimes I'm like blending out and I'm go I'm having a lot of fun. I'm like it is literally touching my eyebrow now. Yeah. But I just go with it. It's a look. It's a look. So. So anyway, yeah, I'm going in that. with Ridge, which is this mat right here. And I'm going in with my tiny, tiny Nabla crease brush, the N205, just further defining I'm my going, inner crease area. I'm going in with wine. Oh yes, she's she's going in with some uh, yellowtail red <laughs> wine. <laughs> Drinking mine way faster than hers because I'm not used to Oh, I, I nurse my wines, trust me. I don't. I do. <laughs> See, we're opposites in all aspects. I'm, yeah, pretty much. I can drink two glasses and she'll be like halfway through one. I'll be like, oops. Yeah. So I'm gonna use um, Cash Beauty Secret Treasure Palette. Love this. It's been really, really good. And like, if this tells you anything about the kind of makeup I like, warm tone neutrals, folks. Warm tone neutrals. I mean, we're both so... doing. We're both using warm tone neutrals. Look at this. Hold yours up too. See? Look at this. We're kind of twinning today. So I'm going in with Magma, which is this dark, dark matte brown right here. Sure. Going in with my Nabla and 204. So I'm gonna go in with Fade first. So I'm gonna put that in my crease. And I'm using, how do you say this brand? Refer? Uh, Refer, yeah. Refer, I'm using the one brush. I also got her under Refer brush. Yeah, I would buy, I'm gonna buy, there's so many things like once I graduate school and I have my final job like that I plan on buying. What's and on your wish list? Definitely new shoes. I don't have a lot of shoes. <laughs> like what kind of shoes? Um, Kind of like I need a new pair of like nice boots. Like, you know, com not combat, but combat boots. Yeah. Um. Cute heels, like oh. booties, because I don't have a lot of booties. I love booties. Um, I want a new pair of Chacos, because the ones I own I've had since I was in eighth grade. And if you all aren't aware, Chacos are like a big thing in the Southeast United States. We, we live oh. in Tennessee. And like I'm, I once wore my Chacos in Brooklyn, New York, visiting my grandmother, and people were staring at my feet like, what the hell? <laughs> 
So if you live anywhere other than the Southeast United States, you might not wear Jocko. That's so. why I'm wearing my short, sh short. <laughs> That's why I'm wearing my short that says Southern women support all women. Mm -hmm. Because we're Southern women. I guess technically I'm a Southern woman. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, why. you live here. Well, I've lived in the South most of my life, but I'm originally from New York. Oh, I forgot. That's where my parents are from. I am from the South. You were, you were born and raised in Memphis, right? Yes, Memphis, Tennessee. And then I moved here for school. The home of Elvis and really good barbecue. And blues. And blues, oh yeah, blues. But if you're from Memphis, you're like, I've never been to Graceland. Like, if you're from Memphis, you don't go to Graceland. Yeah, I figured it was kind of like a touristy thing. Well, it takes, it costs like $65 to get a tour. It's like, really? We do have a bomb ass zoo, though. So if you're ever in Memphis, we have one of the best zoos in the nation. Like, I, no joke. I've only been to Memphis once, and that was in high school for state Latin convention. I was the president of the Latin club. My I took Latin in high, high school. school. I didn't know that. I did. We have something in common. I don't remember anything, but I did. I took it for four years, took the AP exam, did the whole shebang. I didn't do that. Yeah. And so last year of high school, the state Latin convention was in Memphis. And so that was the one time I've been to Memphis. What year was that? 2016. I was already. You were still in high school in 2016. That's when I graduated. Like all my friends are older than me. It's so weird because now it's like I'm officially, my birthday was just last month and I turned 26. Happy I'm, birthday. I'm closer to 30 than I am 20. Yeah. <laughs> That's so weird. Well, but I it's told, kind of exciting. I told time. Luke, I was like, this, this next year is your last year of being in your mid 20s. It's like, then you're going to be in your late 20s. <laughs> I was like, and then you're almost 30. <laughs> I was like, I was like kind of freaking out for him. I was like, That's old. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just gonna have an existential crisis. Because I'm in my early, I'm still, like, I feel like next year is my last year in my early 20s. Then I'll be in my mid 20s. Sorry. Just, sorry. Just sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, but it's sorry. funny because at work I'll say something about being 26 and all my coworkers are like, shut up! Yeah, that'll happen to me too. I'll talk about something and, oh, like, or my coworkers will talk about something. And they think I'm trying to brag. I'm like, I I'm know! Not. I'm literally just saying it. Yeah, well, we finally have, um, a new analyst in my group. She was an intern with us and now she's full time. And she's like six months younger than me. So I'm not the youngest one anymore. That's always a good feeling. Yeah, but like it's like me, her, and then everybody else is in their 40s or above in my group. We're only like seven people, but still. I'm yeah, like, I'm the youngest. I'm not the youngest staff member because we have a bunch of student nurse assistants who are still in their undergrad degrees. Mm -hmm. um, who do patient care and are learning how to be nurses, but I'm the youngest, like, actual registered nurse on the unit. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, I went into glitter glue, my Too Faced glitter glue, and I also am taking high degree, and I think I'm also going to go into... Let's go into True Bronze, which is right there. And then I skipped a few steps, too. I went into Tome to further darken up the crease, the outer crease, and now I'm going into Rec to really darken the outer corner. I guess this is the last question I have prepared. But then we can like still chat about it. And I'll this. probably think of something like I did that. Yeah, you're, you're really good at this. So have I ever influenced you to buy something? I know we talked about refer brushes. Yeah, I'm literally using it. <laughs> is there anything else I've influenced um, you Um, There's things that I want to buy that you've talked about and you know what I mean. But this is the only thing I actually have purchased and it's the refer brushes. And I'm obsessed with the zero one brush. Like it's so good. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like I said, I really want to try Glossier products because I liked what I used that one time. Mm -hmm. um, some of the indie brands, I'll once I have money to spend on stuff like that, I'll ask you again. Like, hey, what are those brands that like the eyeshadow products I really like and blah, 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 just to get an idea. Yep. Um, but yeah. Have I ever? That's, that's the next question. I was like, uh, is anything I do that unique to you that you'd be like, well, I'm going to try that? I don't know if you've ever influenced me to buy a makeup product, but like... Luke mentioned the other day that he thinks I do my makeup and my eyeshadow a lot better than what I used to and so like the thing you've influenced me the most is like how I do my eyeshadow. But I don't think you've ever influenced me to buy a product. At least not that I could Because I don't use anything interesting. The most interesting thing I have right now is the Cash Beauty. I was so excited when I got this. I mean I haven't tried that so. Another thing I do, I make up a lot slower than you and I think that's another reason I don't do it as frequently as you because when I do my makeup I'm like uh, get in the zen, get in the zone. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like vibing. So I can't do it on a daily basis or <laughs> I would never get anything done. Yeah, I mean, I've had to learn to be fast. I mean, now that like I'm working from home all the time, I can kind of be a bit slower, but like when right. I had to go into the office, I mean, you have to be out of the door by a certain time or else like you're late. Oh. And then I'm blowing out my crease with the color burnt. 
I went in with suntan, that matte brown on my lower lash line, and what should I do for the inner corner? I'm gonna go into silk for the inner corner. Oh, I have a question. Okay. What is your biggest makeup horror story? Like, where your makeup just looked really bad in public, or like something really bad happened with it, or like, does that make sense? Mmm. Because I have one, so that's why I'm asking. I don't know if I have one. <laughs> She's like, I'm just too good. Why would I have one? Well, I mean, I've, I've worn bad makeup in public, like, especially when I was first starting out, but like, I mean, like, I've had issues with creasing, just I feel like my eyes are kind of like more hooded, maybe. So I've had like issues with eyeshadow creasing and that hasn't been fun. There's only one thing I can think of. So I cannot apply false lashes to save my life. Me either and I want, we should try that. We should do a video where Actually, like two stupid idiots trying to apply false grab, lashes. Grab those right, right there. These? Yeah, these. Oh Lord. So actually I tried, I haven't tried these. These are the Eyelor Magnetic, but I tried um, the Kiss Magnetic Lashes. Uh, like two or three weekends ago. Oh, yeah, they were really I am an idiot when it comes to applying lashes Literally, you just put on your eyeliner your normal black eyeliner mm -hmm. you put on the magnetic liner like above it You wait till you're to dry you just stick on the lashes and poof, it's idiot proof. Hmm. It's amazing I should do that because so I bought these for a wedding. I'm going to next or in June So yeah, so they're like those eyelashes are great So I cannot apply regular eyelashes to save my life, but those are really easy. But anyways, the one story I can think of is I think Luke and I were like gonna go on a date or something and um, I wanted to wear false lashes because like my mom gave me some and I was like, ooh, they're pretty, I wanna wear them. And so like I tried to put them on, like after my whole face was done, eyes were done, everything, I tried to put them on, I couldn't do it. Like I couldn't align it correctly and it was like ruining my eyeshadow. So I was like, oh Luke, you should do it. And he applied the lash like here. Oh no! And I was like, oh screw it. <laughs> so I just gave up. I washed up away the eye makeup and I did all over again. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. That's my one story that I can think of. Well, mine's a little more traumatic than that, so that's why I asked the question. Uh, <laughs> I, off the recommendation of Nikki Tutorials, like two years ago, I bought um, the Becca, I don't remember the exact one, but it was a Becca foundation, mm -hmm. um, and it was super high coverage. And when I sampled it in the store, you know, you like test it on your neck and then the inside, you make sure it matches. It matched my tone, but the lights there apparently oh, are no! just really different. <laughs> So I, um, I'm doing my makeup for a poster. I wasn't presenting, but I was going to a poster presentation event for research that's done at the College of Nursing for the school I go to. Mm -hmm. um, and I put it on, I'm like, oh no. And I'm like, I'll just conceal and I'll finish my face and it'll probably look more cohesive. Like, it was so yellow. Oh, like, no. ye like, it was just like pure yellow. And I was like, how did I think this matched my undertone, skin tone, whatever. So I wear it to the event and one of my classmates in my cohort is like, Meredith, are you are you okay? And I was like, Yeah, I'm fine. What's wrong? She goes, You just look really yellow. Have you gotten your liver checked out recently? <laughs> of course, a nurse. <laughs> yeah, of course. And she's like, You look like you have jaundice. Are you okay? And I was like, Oh my god, I'm fine. That's awful. Not emotionally. I think you've told me that story. It before. was so embarrassing. Oh. My oh. God. So. That's what I'm saying when like all the high-end makeups I've tried, like foundation wise, like they're always way too yellow for me. Mm. I do and I'm feel yellow, like, but I'm not that yellow. Yeah. I feel like you're more of an olivey tone. I wouldn't call you a yellow tone. Maybe that's why you've had trouble finding. But this one's really good. I don't I mean I the shade range of that foundation is abysmal when it comes to diversity. Yeah. But well, you have like, a, there's a shade for you, so you're like, there's okay. a shade for me. I do wish they'd come out with more a more diverse shade range in that product because I was actually looking at the store one day I'm like there's like four shades of white and then two shades of brown. Oh god There's probably not even a shade for me it. in there. No, no literally the lightest shade is would be too dark for you Yeah, it's it's a abysmal shade range, but yeah, I've had problems with that before like a lot of foundations are too dark for me Like the lightest shade which sucks. I know it's nothing compared to like what black women go. Oh, yeah when it, in regards to shade range, but like come on but it's, a, it's both ends of the spectrum. Like, oh, I, yeah. I fall in the middle. So, so you can find everything. I don't really have that problem. Yeah. It's the ends of the spectrum where the industry is lacking. And I think that's where Fenty has made a huge revolution in the industry. And now everyone's following her steps because they realize, oh, crap, now that it can be done and people are receptive to it, we got to do it. Mm -hmm. Which is a good thing. But mm -hmm. also, it's like you should have done it in the first place. But come on. I agree. 
So anyways, I used, oops, I used three different products while we were just like chatting. I used the Odin's Eye Alpha Cream Lip Stain in the shade Little Jasmine, beautiful nude. I used my Glow Recipe setting spray and also this YSL mascara that I got as a sample. It's fine, I don't love it, it's okay. But anyways. I'm still doing my eyes. I'm done, I think. Oh, well, I'm not. <laughs> Well, we could just keep talking if you want to. I'm still blowing out my crease and my outer line. <laughs> this is this is a long process, folks. This is a long process. She's a she's a professional. I mean, your eyeshadow always looks good, so. Like, she posted a picture on Instagram the other day on her story, and my first thought was like, dang. I'm literally doing the same look I did there. It was so pretty. Oh my gosh. I looked at you and I was like, oh my gosh. There's also my friend a, is beautiful. There's also a heavy filter in that picture, but I mean, but that's my personal Instagram. Like, I don't feel bad about using filters there. Mm -hmm. I'm not like promoting a product. I'm not like, yeah. I have a makeup Instagram, which I post I haven't sometimes. posted on mine in forever. Yeah. I have a makeup Instagram I haven't posted on in what, two years. What's, what's your handle? <laughs> Do you remember? Makeup by underscore mare, M-E-R-E. I think that's my, I should, I, I should post to it tonight. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it somewhere below on this, on the screen and everything. So you now all can see Now that I have it. more free time, I'll start posting to it. Yeah, more. yeah. So, Hey, you might get some of my 175 subscribers <laughs> to follow your makeup Instagram. That'd be nice. Yeah. I do. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, I should start posting more. Yeah. I I don't know. I like YouTube video just because I feel like I can like talk and I feel like my strength is talking and like showing off products and stuff. But I, I, I would really like having a YouTube channel because I'm conceited. I'm not actually conceited. <laughs> But I like talking. I'm about to say, are you calling me conceited? <laughs> no. I like hearing myself talk and I like talking. Oh god, when you start editing videos, you will hate the way you talk. Like I cannot stand my voice. And I just had to like. But get that's used what I was about it. to say. I was like, yeah. I don't think I would like the process of You editing. get you get used to it. And also like the editing software I use, it's uh, Wondershare Filmora. It's like really easy. Like it's literally just like drag and drop. Like it's not anything complex. Like it takes a while. Like I don't even I don't even know how many features are in that darn thing because like it can do everything, and I haven't even scratched the surface. But like for the basic stuff, it's pretty easy. Yeah. And you and like you can look up stuff online. In my channel, online. it's like I wouldn't be able to talk about just one thing. I'd be like one day be makeup, one day would be psychiatry, one day would be who cares? Watch me as I. Dude. You can apply okay. makeup while talking about psychiatry. That's a niche that, could, that has oh. not been explored kinda on YouTube. Like kind of how Bailey Sarian does yeah, makeup. Yeah, true crime I can stuff. do, oh, no day of the week starts with a P. <laughs> or Psychiatry Saturday. Yeah, Psychiatry Saturday. Or Sunday. Psychiatry Saturday. Yep, you have flexibility there. So you will like these. They're they're almost, the, the shimmers in this palette, they're almost Make sure like, you hold it up high. They're, like, they're almost... I don't know if you can tell, but they're almost like, um, I can't. They look kind of wet in texture. Yeah. And they come off so much more like bam, like glittery than they do in the pan, but they're really pretty. So I'm going to go in, I think with gemstone first and then maybe do treasure closer to the inner corner. Cool. And I use my fingers. for. I these. do too. I just find it applies it the best. Like brushes don't get you the impact that you need. So yeah, I'll use a brush to like blend stuff out, but. See, like, look at that. Ooh. Isn't that so pretty? That's really pretty. Like, those look really nice. Yeah, I'm trying to catch up with you wine-wise. <laughs> That's not necessarily a good idea. I'm just kidding. I mean, this is our first class of wine. Yeah, right? and we're almost done. So. Yeah, we're almost done. I mean, I'm done. She's almost done. Right? You're almost done. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. Don't, don't rush. Don't rush. I can talk here forever. So what, what mascara do you use? Um, better than sex. Is it actually better than sex? Yes. Oh, I would say no. I've used that before as not better. Really? I love this mascara. Like, this is my ride or die. Like, I know everyone's like, it's expensive. Blah, blah, blah. But I just really like this. You know what mascara I tried a sample of recently and I love? Chanel has this mascara. It's the Le Volume Stretch. It's like a 3D printed, like, wand. It's all, like, spirally and stuff. Really? It is so good. Like, even Luke. Luke, who doesn't notice anything involving my makeup most of the time. He was like, wow, your eyelashes look really good. Huh. I was like, what? So that's how I knew, and I saw it, and I was like, wow, my eyelashes look amazing. Like, what happened here? So yeah, that, that mascara is awesome. I got a little sample of it with the purchase recently, and I was like, yep, yep, that's good. So I like the Too Faced Better Than Sex for when I want, like, bam lashes, but um, another one, it's also a sample size because I'm cheap, um, <laughs> is the Milk Makeup. Oh. I don't have it with me, but the Milk Makeup Mascara. Is it the Kush Mascara? Yes. Um, I like it. It's not as like dramatic, but it's still 
Looks really nice. It's more natural, I guess. So that's another one I like, but I just didn't bring it with me today. That's cool. I've, I've never used that one. Anything, like a lot of milk makeup products have like CBD in them. And because of my employer, like if you test positive for like cannabis, it's not going to show up. A lot of CBD products actually have THC in them. Even if you're not ingesting it, yeah. it's going to show up. In I don't your, know. It's not. I don't know. That's why I'm okay. scared. Coming from a nurse. I think skincare product, like I use a um, CBD lotion from Burt's Bees. They I have, mean, I work for have, a hospital. Yeah, they I'm have super... very low tol. I mean, yeah, they probably have similar tolerance to that kind of stuff. Like it's very low tolerance, very low tolerance. So. Yeah. Like whenever I'm like no up. no risk. Did randomly, you get tested like twice a year? Did you get tested um like on receiving your job? Yeah, like before my internship. Cuz I started at my job as an intern and I got converted full time after I graduated undergrad. But yeah, I had to go to this place. Oh, this is a funny story. <laughs> Luke was there for this one. Oh my god. So you had to go to a place and basically like pee in a cup for like lack of a I mean, more that's what a better urine. word. Yeah, anyways. So you give a urine sample. And I went to this place on like a Friday afternoon. That was my first mistake. And it was flippin' packed. Oh, was, those places are busy. It busy. was packed. And I, and I like drank a ton of water beforehand. So I get kind of- Cause you're ready. I get pee shy, like under pressure. I do too. I get, I like, I can't pee. So I'm like, okay, I'll drink a ton of water. I'll go in there and everything will be fine. I'm waiting in there for like an hour and 15 minutes. I you're have never, I have never had to pee so much in my life. Like literally, I thought I was going to piss my pants and I went up to the receptionist and I was like if you do not let me take the drug test right now I'm literally gonna pee my pants in this lobby. Like I'm like, I'm not kidding. I'm not doing this to threaten you Like I'm dead serious and she looked at me and she's like, okay, we can get you in right now So they got me in I pee and like I have never had this happen to me before or since but I had to pee so bad that it physically hurt me Oh, yeah to pee Obviously, she has never worked a 12-hour shift before. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> dear God, what is this feeling? But I it hope. felt so good. And I was texting Luke the entire time because he was in REI, which is like close to the place that I was getting the oh, thing. Okay. And I was like, Luke, I have to pee so bad. What do I do? What do I do? I want to piss my pants. What do I do? What do I do? And he was like, just go up to the receptionist and tell her how you're feeling. I'm like, this is embarrassing. He's like, well, would you rather piss your pants in the lobby? I was like, no. So it was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible. Oh, oh. So that's why I had to go I don't do anything. Like, I drink wine sometimes, and like, yeah, I I, I barely even went like clubbing pre-COVID. Like, what I am know. I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I kind of miss clubbing. Do you? Is it sad I miss Hannah's? I've never been to Hannah's. It's nothing. The reason I say that is because it's nothing to miss. Oh, okay. Like literally, you walk around and it's like, you know, like sticky. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I was telling uh, Luke the other day, like I. I'm, norm I'm not normally, I'm very extroverted, like, these people know that, um, and I've said that before, but, like, I'm not the kind of person that likes to go clubbing most of the time, just because, like, crowds and weird dudes trying to, like, yeah. grind on you, and you know, not really my kind of scene, and I don't, I don't really like to drink in the comfort of my own home, or, like, at a restaurant, not, like, really, at, like, a club, but I just miss dancing so much. I just want to dance. Like, I, I miss it, which is why I'm so excited to go to that darn wedding. So oily. My makeup is already breaking down. I don't, I, yeah, I see that. I don't understand how that happens. Like, it does not. Oh, it's so I mean, there are problems with being dry, though. Like, if I, if I wear foundation and, like, some days when I'm really dry, I'll have, like, dry patches just, like, stuck to yeah, it. It's, like, like, texture. What's better? It's, I don't know. I don't know. That's why I was going to ask you, like, what is better? I don't know. It's just my break, my makeup breaks down so easy. Yeah, that sucks. I'm now using the Sacred Omrizi highlighter. Insert angel music. Oh. <laughs> the angels are singing from above. <laughs> I'm almost done. I'm just highlighting now. You haven't even hit pan on that thing. You need to use it more. I told you. I told you. I don't do my makeup that much, but when I do, obviously, I get really into it. Mm -hmm. I, I take mm -hmm. forever. Can I use it on my brow bone too? Yeah. Actually? Wow, I'm really feeling the wine. Holy <laughs> mackerel! I don't drink like really at all anymore. Like at the beginning of COVID, I'm not sure if you went through the same thing as I did. At the beginning of COVID, oh my god, I, I so was much. super sad. So I ate a bunch of edible cookie dough and drank a bunch of wine and then proceeded to gain 15 pounds. Oh yeah. Uh yeah. So because I was just really sad. And then Luke was like, um, I don't think you're handling this in the healthiest way. That's what Jake said. And I was too. like, yeah, you're right. So then I was like, okay, I need to like exercise again. Yeah. And like do just like, I don't know, be more myself and like find healthy coping mechanisms. And I mm -hmm. finally found that, but I mean, right. it's taking me this long to lose the, the 15. So I'm basically back where I was pre COVID. 
but a I year mean, later. You're doing better than I am. Thanks. <laughs> I was like that too though. I drank way too much at the beginning of the pandemic and I was going through a bunch of like interpersonal stuff that was stressing me out too. So yeah. it was just kind of like a wombo combo. That. I know it looks it's so all good. Pretty. It looks so ah, good. I want this highlighter. Dang it. Dang it. All right, here you go. All right, are you done with your makeup? Yes, I'm done. I am done too. <laughs> Finally. Oh wait, did you do lips? No, I forgot. Okay, she needs to do lips. <laughs> I forgot that existed. This is, we're gonna blur, we're gonna blur this out if I can figure out how to in my editing software. Uh, this is bleep bleep uh, liquid lipstick. <laughs> I don't support this brand anymore, but yeah. I'm also not about wasting product, so. Yeah, sorry. he's like, I mean, you already gave him, his, uh, gave him the money, Yeah, because so. you didn't ask me what products I regret buying. Oh, what do you regret buying? This? No, because they're really good. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I'm just not gonna repurchase them. I regret buying the James Charles Morphe palette. Oh, is it all that stuff that came out? Or because it sucks? A little of both. So I don't hate James Charles. Like, I think he's just young and well, naive. Well, the stuff that came out with these, recently. he's like a pedophile. Yeah, he's doing really bad recently. Yeah. So, and I know they removed the palette from their website. Thank God, um, they're too slow. So that and the palette, the palette is not, for someone like me who likes neutrals. Yeah. Um, I only use like two colors from it. <laughs> and you know, it's like, like I bought it for the hype. I didn't buy it because I was like, I really like this. Mm -hmm. um, so now I just have all these bright colors that I probably will eventually use, but like don't really use that often. Yeah. And it was really expensive. I had a bad experience with that palette too. So I didn't buy it, but our mutual friend, uh, she, or you gave it to her actually. I bought it for her. Yeah, and so I went over her house, I believe it was that night and she used it on me. And every time, I'm not, sh I, like eyeshadows, like the formulas differ, well, yeah, but like they're generally like similar. And like, I know how to use color because I use a lot of color. And, and like, it's and not technically I, eyeshadows, it's a pressed pigment. Well, I, I use pressed pigments yeah. and they don't perform this way. And every time I would blend out her eyeshadow even slightly or layer an eyeshadow on top of it, there would just be like patches, patches. of like bald spots. It's super patchy. Like the it's only so colors, annoying. The only colors I can use from it and it not be patchy are the neutrals. Yeah. So like, what's the point? Because I'm, I mean, you're not used to using bright eyeshadows. So like I understand if you're like, oh, I don't know what to do with this. Like, oh, why is it being but patchy? But you're like, no, like I can see I, I use bright eyeshadows and this thing I believe is a piece of crap. So like, I don't like it at all. And I don't own it, but like. There is one color from it that I do really, really like, and it's literally like this shade in an eyeshadow, and it's so pretty. But other than that. But you can get that in a bunch of That's products, what I'm saying. So, like, what's the point? Like, it's not a big deal. But. So, anyways, we are done with our makeup. Finally, like an hour of filming later. So, this is this video will not be an hour long. I will, I'm going to cut this down. But, anyways, these are the <laughs> final looks. We are beautiful, we are glamorous, warm tone neutrals on the eyes, ooh ooh. So thank you, Meredith, for being on my channel. This Thanks is a lot of fun. Me. I had a lot of fun, obviously. Cool. <laughs> she should start her own YouTube channel. Like this video and comment if you agree that Meredith should like, <laughs> should, should start her own YouTube channel. So anyways, if you all like this video, like the video for the algorithm, thank you. If you like me, or if you like Meredith, maybe she'll be on the channel again, please subscribe, would definitely appreciate that. If you have anything to comment down below, comment that please. And with that, thank you for spending a little part of your day with us and we will see you all next time. Bye.